Hey guys, welcome back to the Mr. Fix channel. Today I got the Scrambler 400 in the shop again today. I'm going to change the rear axle carrier bearings. Stay tuned. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening, not doing too much of nothing, just kind of staring at the wall. And... Alright, so the first thing we need to do before we take anything apart is we need to get the two nuts loose on the axle. Now, I've had problems with these in the past. Hopefully these will cooperate. I don't really want to break out the torch. So let's get those loose and then take the tires off, jack it up, yada yada. Now I have so many tools. This place is loaded with tools, but what I do not have is a wrench to fit those two nuts. So yeah, well, what can I say? Don't do what I do. I got that parking brake set so this thing doesn't roll. Hopefully these will play nice. Oh my god. Yep. Starting to look like it was the last time I did this. <clears throat> Please bear with any noise you hear in the background. There's people running chainsaws. Now after you've destroyed that nut getting it loose, while you're waiting on it to cool, go ahead and pull your tires off and work on getting this hub off. Uh, side cutters usually work pretty good getting these cutter pins out. Get that side as straight as you can and then clip it and then use it as a lever and pull it out like this. Inch and one eighth socket. All right, now as you made it this far, don't celebrate yet because you still have to get that sprocket hub off of there. Oh yay, that's not stuck. That's how it's supposed to come off. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the chain and get this sprocket hub off of here and I can shove the axle through that way if it's going to play nice. Uh, I think the chain guard, chain guard's catching me here. I just got a half inch socket and a half inch wrench. Okay, now this should slide right off. Okay, good deal. As long as the axle isn't seized in here, it should just slide right out. Just like that. I have fought with those. Oh my gosh. I might put a clip in the last time I had to fight with this. All right, this is being very stubborn, so I'm trying to heat shock it hot, cold, hot, cold. If you're wondering what size wrench to buy for these axle nuts, they're an inch and three quarter. All right, now we gotta take the bearing carrier loose. It's five eighths bolt, five eighths nut. You gotta take these all the way out. Now, if you have the tow hitch on here, go ahead and take this thing off. It'll make it easier to get that out of there. There's a couple holes on the side of this thing. I'm going to stick a couple extensions in here. These are quarter inch extensions. I need to rotate this thing around so that the 
there's like a notch, like a tab sticking out on this. I gotta rotate it around to get it in this slot here. Got it. All right, this thing is disgusting. So I'm gonna put this thing in my little douche tank here, and I'm gonna douche this thing out real good, try to get all this crud off of it. Well, it isn't any prettier, but it is cleaner. All right, now finally, the reason why we're all here, we get these bearings out of here. Now there's a sleeve that runs through the center of this in between those bearings, and there's no lip to catch the bearing on. So what you gotta do is you gotta pry this thing over and there's probably gonna be a lot of grease in here. So you gotta pry kind of hard. You can see how it's kind of shifted over. If you look down the inside, you can just catch the inside of that inner race on that far bearing. Now you're gonna need something long, like I'm gonna use this chisel. You can use a drift or a punch or something, but you wanna make sure it's got nice square edges on it. If it's a punch, obviously it's round, but you just want to make sure it's got nice sharp edges on it. Otherwise, you'll never get that bearing out. You're just going to push that thing over to the side like I did. And you're going to come in through the other way. You're going to catch the edge of that bearing and you're going to tap it. You'll, once you feel it move, you're going to squish this thing over the other way. And tap the other side of the bearing race and keep going back and forth until this comes out. It'll drive the seal out along with it. Now the bearing is going to want to come out this way. So you've got to set this on something that will allow that to come out. I'm just going to set it on my vise here. i got the jaws open up far enough to where that bearing will clear. Alright, there's a seal. It just fell out. Now get you a couple rags handy because there's going to be a bunch of grease in this thing. <laughs> and it's going to get all over you. So just wipe all this grease up. Oh, I got it all over me. Gross. And this, folks, is why I wear black clothes all the time. Okay, now there's still a bunch of grease inside this thing. But uh, I'm going to wait for that. I'm going to go ahead and tap this other bearing out. Now that that sleeve's out of the way, you can get in there a lot easier. Now you're gonna to wanna to clean all this grease out, all this old stuff out of here. Now I'll take you some brake clean or stick it in your parts washer, do whatever you gotta to do to degrease this thing thoroughly. That way if there's any metal chips that ended up in here, it won't go into your new bearings. Now I'm not sure how it happened, but there's some sharp metal burrs on this sleeve so I'm gonna I'm gonna take some time and knock all those off with some sandpaper or something because I don't want none of that coming loose and getting into the new bearings so if you have the same issue I would advise just just take a little time and clean any burrs off of this thing if you have them all right here are my replacement bearings and seals I'll put a part number right up here, but just so you can get an idea, these are 62OD by 35ID by 14 width. And the seal, of course, it's going to be the same outside diameter, 62. We've got like 45. I measured the the shaft that rides on this seal, and it's 45. So we got 62 by 45. That's reading. 624 it's probably it's probably six mil yeah six mil so 62 by 45 by six on the seal like i said i'll put a part number up the next tool you're going to need is some way to drive the bearing in now you can use a socket if you have one the right size now remember you want to drive on the outside race not the inside race find something that will fit the outside race 
but also will fit inside here. If you have a seal driver kit, you probably have the right tool. Uh, so socket, like I said. But if you can't find anything else, a cheap alternative is a piece of two inch black iron pipe that fits the outside race of the bearing well and it does slip inside the carrier. So this is what I'm going to use. I squared this up in the lathe. It don't have to be perfect, but it needs to at least be fairly straight. So if you have a way to cut this fairly straight, this, this is a good cheap alternative. Take a new bearing in there. You want to go in as straight as you can, so look across it here. Get it started in with a hammer and get it as straight as you can. Oh, and a word of advice, whatever you're using to drive this bearing in, make sure it's clean. You don't want any dirt falling into your brand new bearing. When you hear the sound change, you're home. Now you can drive them in with a hammer like this, this works just fine. But if you have a press, just use your press. Okay, when you install your seal, you want to make sure that the rubber is out. Like on this side, it's all metal. On this side is a rubber lip. You want to make sure that's facing out. You can install this the same way. Okay, now don't forget your sleeve. Slide that down in there. I have a press, but I'm just doing it this way to show you this. it can be done this way. Hear the sound change, you're there. Put your other seal in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pump this thing full of grease while it's here on the bench. I'm just gonna put grease into it till it starts coming out the bearings. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I have enough grease. All right, you can see where the grease is coming out in the bearings. So I'm just gonna take this and kind of wipe that seal down with it. Get some on that inside of that sleeve to prevent rust. Oh, you know she likes it. All right, this is ready to install. Now when you install this onto the swing arm, you wanna make sure that the side that has this hole in it goes towards the sprocket. But before you install this, you wanna clean all the grease and dirt and everything off of this and the axle before you install this. If this part of your axle is wore down and the seal won't seal anymore, this is replaceable. You just gotta tap this thing off. And then there's a snap ring. All right, there's an O-ring that goes right here against this collar on the inside. And there's also an O-ring that goes against the sprocket hub in between the sprocket hub and the bearing on this side. So I'm gonna get all this reassembled now. All right, again, make sure that the hole that's in the bearing carrier goes to the sprocket side. He's gonna be a bitch to put on. Put a little bit of grease on your axle right here. Make sure you get some down on these splines. This just keeps the rust down and helps it for the next time you take this apart. Don't forget your O-ring. It goes on next. Now you can put your sprocket hub on. Then this flat washer goes on against the sprocket hub. And then put your two nuts on. Now this nut gets torqued to 150 foot-pounds. I'm just going to snug it up for now because I'm going to need the, the chain on and use the parking brake to hold this still. Oh, I need to buy a wrench. I can't keep doing it like this. Like I said, I'm going to wait to tighten these down. I am going to clean these threads with some brake clean and then use some blue Loctite on this outer nut. you got to clean the grease off of it because if there's any grease, the Loctite won't work. 
Well, that's pretty much it. Home free at this point. Put that hub back on, get the wheels back on it, get the chain wrap wrap back around it, and we can set it on the ground and torque that axle nut. All right, remember that hole in the carrier? It's right, it's right there. There's also a hole in the sprocket hub. If you line these two up, like that, you can use the axle and the tires to rotate that carrier to tighten the chain. Now, I don't have any way to measure this torque on this nut, so I'm just going to set up for the German spec, you know, uh, good and tight. Oh, i got to buy me a wrench. I can't keep doing this. Inch and three quarter wrench. Next on order. These bolts in this sprocket guard really make this a pain. Anyway, you get it. You tighten this down good and tight, and then I'll come back and put some blue Loctite on them threads. I don't always follow every specification in the book, but uh, I try my best to. Always shake up your Loctite. Click. All right, well that was the last step there. Well, what can I say? Don't do what I do. Job's done. Wasn't too bad of a job. Oh, it took, I don't know, few hours to go through all that. Most of that was cleaning the parts. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and don't be afraid to fix it. Thanks for watching.